All right. Hello, hello, everyone. So here we are going live again. This is Antoinette, and I'm here to teach you violin. So thanks for joining me. Um, today, we're going to go over the all important bow grip because it's so important. That's why I called it that. So uh, first, I do want to show you what you're going to do when you take the bow out of the case. So you're going to I have a few bows here. Sorry. So I'm looking for my good one because it feels the nicest. So you're going to take the bow out of your case and then you're going to take the screw and you're going to turn it. So you're going to go clockwise. OK, so when your bow is uh, in the case, it's going to be very, very loose. You see how the hair is kind of jiggling around there. So that's kind of too loose to put away. Uh, so you're going to go righty tighty and you're going to go until it's about the width of a pencil in the middle. So you see how the bow has a natural bow in it. So if you're too tight, then it's going to actually this bow, the stick will be parallel to the hair. That's way too tight. Um, so you do want to make sure it still has a bow in it this way. If it's really, really, really tight, it's actually going to bow outwards. And that means your bow is about to snap. Please loosen it. So, okay, so we have our bow tightened now. So the next thing you would do is you would take your rosin. They come in different shapes and sizes and colors now. So you're going to put some rosin on. You're going to get the whole bow. Okay, so make sure that you don't only do the middle. That would be bad because when you're bowing, you know, you're using all the ends of your bow. I usually like to just bow right on my rosin. I find that to be the fastest. Sometimes I see people doing these weird <laughs> angles, but this feels the most natural because, of course, you know how to bow, so you're just going to bow right there. And, of course, I'm putting a little bit extra on the ends because that's where you turn the bow around, so, you know, that uses up more rosin. And in case you didn't know, uh, rosin is made from tree sap, and uh, it gets, you know, they do some science with it, some chemistry, then it comes into the solid form. And then when you place it on your bow hair, it turns into a white powder. And then that white powder enables the bow hair to grip on the string. So without any rosin, it wouldn't sound like anything. Let's see if maybe this bow doesn't have, what? Doesn't have rosin on it, maybe. Let's see. No, there's definitely rosin. I know that because it, it's pluming white powder. Uh, so if you're wondering, can you put on too much rosin on the bow? The answer is, I mean, not really. It's not dangerous to, but it would leave a residue on your violin, which you can and should clean up after every uh, practice session. So you just grab a clean, uh, lint-free cloth, wipe it you know, under, on the strings. You can even wipe the whole fingerboard, um, and that will be really healthy and good for your violin. Basically, it makes things last longer and it saves you the trouble of having to like use a salt, some kind of very, very special violin uh, solvent. Don't use any uh, thing that's not approved for violin. Uh, you'd have to get that stuff off. Unless you're an old time fiddler, in which case it's a badge of honor to have a big plume of white uh, rosin powder left on your fiddle. Um, okay, so We've got the bow rosined up. We're ready to learn how to hold it. And this is the point in the private lessons where I always say, all right, let's grab a pencil. I know that pencils are way less interesting than bows. I remember when I was a kid, I thought it was a joke to learn on a pencil. But, you know, it's just something that has to be done. you got to walk before you can run. Unless you're one of my students, Jackie, in which case everything's opposite for you. You can run before you walk. Whenever she wants to play something that she doesn't get, she's like, let's do it faster. And I started denying that for a while, but I don't know. It's just her thing. She likes to do that. Whatever works for you. Okay. So anyway, we're going to learn how to hold the bow properly. The reason why is because you're going to play better. You're going to play more reliably. You're going to play more comfortably once you get used to the position of the bow hole. And um, you're going to be able to play with more versatility. Is that a word? more versatility, also not a word, uh, versatility. I don't know if that's the word. Anyway, you're going to be able to be more versatile if you have the right bow grip. If you don't, what's going to happen is your hand's going to freeze up. It's going to stiffen up 
And then there's going to be a lot of sounds that you're not going to be able to produce because your hand is just not in the right position for that. So let's go through the contact points for each finger so that you can practice this constantly on an object like a pencil, then we'll go to the bow, okay? So let's pretend we have a marker um, for each finger. So on the, on the right hand here, on the pinky, we have the tip. On the ring finger, we have the line, like the back of the joint here, and the line. So tip, back of the joint, back of the joint. Now on the index finger, we have these three bones, right? This one, that one, and that one. And we want to talk about the middle bone, but this is different finger. It's totally different. It's on the side. Because this was on the tip. This was on the back of the finger, back of the finger. And this one is on the side, and that's going to become really important. And then, of course, we have the thumb, which is going to be here on the tip. Okay, just like if you were doing the okay symbol, that's actually right where it is. Tip, line, line, side of the middle bone, tip, okay? So there's a couple ways that you can um, learn how to put your hand on the bow. I'm gonna go with the classic bunny ears. All right, so with the classic bunny ears, we are forming a circle and the thumb is, see where these lines are? You gotta go there. That's where the thumb meets, but it has to be a circle, okay? We don't want a wolf. We want a nice, soft bunny with the front teeth hanging over. And we got our little ears here. They're nice and soft and relaxed. Okay, so actually, if you can, um, so make sure your fingers, these are pointing down. Don't leave it like that because that's going to be bad for your bow. Fingers are pointing down. And uh, I actually want you to move it a little bit. So kind of like pull in. And what I really want is I want you to open it. Okay, and I want you to keep that circle shape. A lot of people open it and then they lose everything. I want you to open it and keep the thumb pointing like this imaginary circle is pointing at that spot. And the reason I want you to do that is because that's how you're gonna hold the pencil. Okay, because if you go like this, you open and then it's not gonna make sense, okay? So teeth facing down. And if you need to raise your elbow for that, that's fine. Okay, teeth facing down, open up, put it on the back of the joints, the lines, and then thumb, the little bottom teeth, come down here, okay? So now it looks like this. You're gonna see this in a lot of places where you have to work with the two fingers and then you put these other fingers down. So at first I would just practice that, you know, back of the joint, thumb, you got your circle. Back of the joint, thumb, you got your circle. Now, one thing to be careful because you don't see this. This is not a circle. This is a banana thumb. There's no time for bananas here. That's what we say to the kids. This is time for this, for the circle. <laughs> okay, so you got that, good, let's move on. Okay, so pinky goes on top, but it's not straight or locked, it is rounded. Look at that, all the joints are bent. That's how you know a finger is what we call rounded. I got confused when I was a kid. What is round? This is jointed, how is that round? But round means everything is bent. If it's locked and it's straight, or if one is, if you have like this lock thing where you have like the bend on the outside and one straight, it's not what we want. Unlock it and round it out. Okay, and that leaves the index finger. We said it goes on the middle joint, on the middle bone, not the joint, on the side, okay? Now, could I have done this? Middle index finger down? Yes. Pinky down? Yes. In fact, I found it to be different for different people. Okay, so if you're watching this and you're learning anything, please leave a like or a comment so I know that I'm helping you. It really helps me to not ramble, so that'd be great. All right, so uh, what you have to do is practice that bow grip a lot on the pencil. So bunny ears, chomp, pinky, index finger, check it, is it good? Usually when someone um, fixes one thing, like let's say the thumb is this way, and then they fix it and usually another one moves out of place. So you kind of have to keep checking it. So you have to like fix it, check it, fix it, check it, fix it, check it, okay? So now, um, I'm gonna show you another way to put the bow into position. So here's the 
different way. So you're gonna take your hand, flop it over. So some people's hands are very stiff by nature, in which case, like they're like this. I'm like, okay, shake it out, do whatever you need to do to relax it. And then sometimes this works nice, and sometimes this works nice where you raise the wrist only. Fingers are relaxed, because then they're a bit closer together. So this helps also with the natural spacing. Everybody's hand is different. So everybody's bow grip is gonna look slightly different, okay? So I'm gonna do the one where I raise my wrist only. This leaves my fingers here. Now, here's the trick. You can't move your right hand, can't move it. Okay, so my right hand is in its own bubble. It cannot be moved by my body. My left hand comes in places the pencil on the pinky, places the pencil on the back of the joint, on the next back of the joint, and then on the index finger. So actually you can do this whole thing with a completely relaxed hand. And right, we got over, up. Okay, hand doesn't move, take our pencil, place it here. So it looks like a diagonal. Okay, if you go like this, the bow grip's not gonna be correct. You get it, and the hand's totally relaxed. We're just bringing the pencil up toward the index fingers. So the only thing I find you have to do is you do have to place the thumb into position. And that would go in between the middle and the ring finger, or, and that's easy on the pencil because it's very light, or if you're on the bow, you're gonna, you might find yourself doing a circle with the uh, middle finger, and that's totally fine. Okay, so you're gonna practice that all day long, right? You're gonna pick up your pencil at work, your pen. Sometimes I even tell people to graduate. I say like, pick up something heavier, you know? Pick up this other thing, practice that. Hello, Funk Medic official, thanks for coming. I just explained the bow grip. So, uh, you know, sometimes I say, pick up heavier objects. A lot of times people have a problem with a locked pinky. It looks like that and you have to unlock it. Sometimes I find it helps to tap. You need that nice, beautiful roundness. Everything has to get rounded. Every single finger has every single joint bent, right? Outwards, <laughs> okay? So, and then I say, pick up something heavier, you know? Here we go, check it out, make sure it's round. Now, once you have mastered the art of doing an amazing bow grip on a pencil or a pen, or, well, you probably can't do it on a chapstick, but on anything that is this, size and shape, and you feel totally comfortable, then probably takes a couple days at least. Then you're gonna, cause like in a lesson, normally I would do it on the next lesson, which would be a week later. So then you're gonna grab your bow. So I'm looking for my favorite bow, which is this one. Okay, and then here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna do the same thing, All right? We had our bow grip on the pencil. Thumb made a circle in between these two or at the middle finger. So if you want, you can put it, like whatever method you're using to do that with the pencil, whether it's the bunny ears or the floppy hand, you can do the same thing with the bow. So let's say I was doing bunny ears. So I got my circle. My thumb is actually gonna go half on the frog and half on the stick. Okay, so I've actually known someone who puts their thumb here who is a professional. So I would say that's totally fine. But most people I know do put it here, half on the frog, half on the stick. And then if you're doing bunny ears, you can put these fingers down next. Notice my thumb is not by my index finger, okay? So here, we can put our pinky down, make sure it's rounded, not straight like that or, or locked. And then the index finger can go down in terms of spacing. Again, that really helpful way is to flop the hand. You can raise the wrist if you want. Same thing, don't move the right hand. Take the bow, place it on the pinky. You get, see how I'm moving the bow up diagonally? So I'm, I'm meeting my joints here at the back of my, uh, let's see what I think, at the back of my, you know what I'm talking about, the lines here in the back of the joint, those lines, doing that. And then obviously at the contact point at the index finger, which is the side of that middle bone. Okay, so, uh, again, floppy hand, you can raise the wrist. Sometimes you don't have to. Pinky, two fingers, index finger. Now the thumb, in that case, you're always gonna put it in that same spot. If you find that you look like this, then all you have to do is take the same thing, same 
uh, finger spacing and just move it over like that. Okay, you can also move it over like uh, this, that's fine. Just don't do that. The reason why is it's so imbalanced. Think about it. This is basically the four fingers that are on top. You want it to be more balanced so that you can operate it so that the pinky can operate it that way. And the index finger, if, you, if you're on the violin, the index finger can press and do things. So they're both, you know, doing their jobs. But if, you're, if your thumb is in the wrong spot, even if it's on the end of the frog there, if it's placed near the index finger, it's gonna be a weird unbalanced seesaw. Nobody likes an unbalanced seesaw, you know what I mean? So uh, I think that's gonna be it for today. Tomorrow, I would like to go over more things on the bow specifically some exercises that you can do to strengthen the pinky. Um, but for this, I would say if you were following this daily and you were uh, applying all these things, you're going to watch me tomorrow, then I would say please practice the grip on the pencil. Place it, check it, fix it. Place it, check it, fix it. And then um, once you have really comfortable with that, put it on the bow. Now, we have a question. How much tension on the strings? I think you mean the bow hair. And the answer to that is it's slightly different for each bow. That's why I have a couple bows here. So this bow is a little fancier. And so actually there's not that much tension. Um, you can see the space here is larger than the middle space, right? Bigger again. So about a number two pencil or the size of your pinky. But on less expensive bows, I noticed that it takes, it takes a lot more to hold that tension. So like, here's it loose, like when in the case, right? Actually, that's too loose for the case because the hairs are gonna catch on things. So for, probably to put it away, it'd be like that. Okay, now this right here, for, on some bows, that's actually an okay tension, but not on this bow. And I know that because when I, um, go to play, the hair touches the, uh, sorry, the stick touches the hair. And that's, that's, you're not going to get anything out of that. And you can see actually just then when I lifted it up, it was very obvious. So now this is the cheaper bow. So if I tighten it, ready, tidy, right? If I tighten it, let's look at this. So this is again, kind of a nice tension, but only on a more expensive bow, which holds tension better. So again, if I'm playing, it's like really bouncy. You know, it's like got this weird after bounce. So I find that on cheaper bows, you do have to go a bit tighter. Um, this looks pretty good. This will probably be about the size of my pinky. I only hate saying that because I don't like when people touch the bow. The golden rule about the bow is never, ever, ever touch the bow hair, right? So this uh, tension looks pretty good. And it doesn't get messed with when I play. Excuse me. <coughs> so um, there is such a thing as too tight. There's definitely such a thing as too tight. You should err on the side of too loose for sure because too loose isn't gonna break your bow, whereas too tight is gonna break your bow. In fact, I did have a student whose bow broke one time. It was crazy. We were in the middle of an exercise and he, I was like, oh, I'll just wait till he's done with the exercise and then I'll tell him to loosen his bow. Meanwhile, before the exercise ended, snap, the whole thing broke. And I actually still have it. I, I kept it because I kept meaning to like do something with it, but I never did. Anyway, it snapped right there. Look at that. Just because it was too tight. Can you believe it? See, be careful. Not too tight. Okay, so um, any other questions? Love to answer them. Uh, if you don't, if you're not catching this live or you have more, uh, feel free to, to add them and I will answer them later. Um, let's see, is there anything else I was going to say about those? Uh, I don't think for now. But if you missed the beginning, feel free to re-watch re this so that you can catch what I might have said that you missed, that you need to know. Uh, so thanks again for joining me. If this is your first time watching me, you can check out my website, nycviolinstudio.com for more. If you're not a beginner and you want to hang out with me more, 
Uh, stay tuned for more live sessions. I actually have this going now, so you can kind of follow a schedule. I'll be getting that up real soon. And this is all free stuff that I'm giving you because I want to hang out with you more. I'd love to get you in my group classes. Um, the group classes are going to be starting February 2nd and also available on the website. <laughs> and sorry, I'm trying to hide it, you see. I'm experimenting with this new streaming. Restreaming on multiple platform technology. You're welcome. Um, and yeah, so join me. See you soon. Subscribe. Do all the stuff. Like it, etc. Thanks for coming. Um, looking forward to answering more of your questions. Bye.